part three of Red Ranger came calling. So remember, he was just asked, he was just at who he thought might be Santa Claus. His, the real guy's real name was Sonder Klos. And he asked him for that bike that he wants more than anything. And Sant, or Sonder Klos said, mm, we'll see, we'll see. But, but he already believed because he made his dog float Amelia in the air, just like reindeer, okay? So we go back to the little boy and he's waking up. On Christmas morning, I awoke to the air colored pink, which I took as a sign of coming paradise. Slipping down the hall, I paused and crossed my fingers for luck before viewing the prize that would guarantee my happiness into old age. Amelia lay spread-eagled and snoring on the rug, safely anchored to earth by a toaster and a Hoover vacuum cleaner. Our pitiful tree was tucked against the wall, looking lonely and pitiful as usual. Also, as usual, the room was empty of buck-tweed bicycles. Completely, utterly, terribly empty. And here's a picture of that. Hmm. I searched the house and yard, confirming the worst. No bicycle. With a few flashy parlor tricks, the old humbug had steered me right into the same old childish, childish quicksand. Faith in a grown-up. My disappointment bubbled into anger, and I vowed out loud that Mr. Santa Phony Claus would feel the terrible wrath of the Red Ranger of Mars. Amelia wanted no part of wraths and tried crawling farther under the hoover, but I scooped her up and stomped off in a rage toward the old house on Point Robinson. As we made our way over the fresh snow, out of my mouth poured a symphony of childhood outrage, so fiery in passion, so shocking in fury, that it superheated the morning air. Behind me, it left a great purple fog of cussing residue wafting across the Vashon strawberry fields. Some say it's still drifting about today, causing panic among the rabbits. And here he goes, he's furious going to that old man's house. And there's the, ugh, oh, there's his fury that's heating up the morning air. He's gonna give him a piece of his mind. We reached the house and I stormed in without knocking. I barely noticed that sheets covered the paintings and windows in the hall. I found the old phony upstairs in bed. But there were others in the room, more elves, a swarm of elves, a flock, a flood, a murmuring horde of puny pointed eared little old men stood about with their hats off. Although foggy minded in my fury, I couldn't help but be impressed with such a scene. I affixed a double deadly red ranger evil eye on the old man in bed. He breathed with a whistling rattle and opened his eyes when I stopped at the door. Boys, he wheezed, the red ranger has come calling. Looking at me, he said, we're going, we're going to have a going away party, red. These old friends were kind enough to see me off. His arms rose shakily outstretched. His eyebrows went high as if waiting for some sort of wonderful news. Come closer, he said, eyes glistening. Tell me exactly what you thought of your special bicycle. Oh, oh, I'd tell him exactly, all right. And this is him. Finding Santa Claus in bed with all the elves with their hats off. And Santa's acting like he gave him, the, or the guy, Sonder Close. 
<sighs> I paused to organize my fit, but as the steam built up and the vile words arranged themselves, a new emotion began to build, pushing aside my anger. I fought it back, but to my horror, it kept coming. The Red Ranger of Mars, protector of the 23rd century and savior of grateful princesses, faced a new enemy. Tears. As I think back now, after so many years, it seems they came for more than just a bicycle beyond reach. But before they arrived, the old man's hand reached out toward my own. Years of brainless kid instinct obscured my emotions and I grasped it. Even though my brimming tantrum, even, no, even through my brimming tantrum, I noticed it was damp and trembling. His eyes stared at mine, looking for a word of Red Ranger approval. His eyes seemed to beg for it. Why, old Sander Close was nervous. The sad, failing old man, whoever he was, truly believed he'd delivered to me my Christmas wish. And then, up from some unexplored crevice inside me, from a place that I did not know, came something new in my experience. I opened my mouth and watched helpless as it all poured out. Do you want to see how mad he is and sad in so many emotions? And there's Santa Claus saying, what? That is about as mad and sad and disappointed as I've ever seen a person. The bicycle, of course that bicycle. Sir, I have never quite had such a glorious machine in all my life. You may have noticed my face actually glowing just now. It was from pride. Using skills gained over a lifetime of telling whoppers, I launched into a soaring account of the adventures I planned aboard a bicycle that I knew I did not have. His eyes blazed to life with each growing fiction, meeting each swoop from the truth with clapping hands and a triumphant, woo-wee! After I finished, I sat back, winded from the torrent of joyful fibbery. I was feeling strangely happy, while it occurred to me that I had no particular reason to be happy at all. Let's go home, I said to Amelia, who jumped. She hadn't seen me smile before and I and figured I was having a seizure. Do you want to see him pretending? Doesn't want to make the old man feel bad. So here he is pretending, telling him about the wonderful bicycle that doesn't exist. As I turned to leave, as we turned to leave, I noticed that the elves seemed agitated. At the door, I looked back to see several of them trying gently to keep the old man in his bed. Color had temporarily filled his cheeks, and he struggled to his feet. Grinning impishly, he motioned for silence and then bent to ear, elf ear level. He whispered, boys, we're back. The little men looked mortified. Turning to me, he smiled and said, it's been a pleasure having the Red Ranger call. I saluted and said, then I'll call again. I meant it, but that's the last I ever saw of the old man. As I headed for the stairs, he had summoned up the last of his strength and stood at the door, his arms outstretched. Time to fly, he said. Slowly, every one of the gathered elves gently drifted out of his room and up toward the rafters, the expression on their faces looking similar to the one I'd seen on Amelia's the night before. I pried my co-pilot out of the corner where she was wedged in mortal horror, and we left, my head reeling. And that's the end of... Number four.
We'll have five. I wonder if we'll get through it on in five episodes. See you on five or four, five. Well, you know, the next one.